Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to more Warhammer lore, where today we are going to have a look at the Chaos Dwarf Hell Cannon. The latest amongst the true Chaos Dwarf artillery pieces, in my opinion. And, well, let's begin there, shall we? Because the Chaos Dwarves are one of those interesting little factions that have been on the periphery of Games Workshop's attention up until they, you know, yeeted the entire setting, of course. And even then, in the End Times books, I think all they really mentioned about the Chaos Dwarves is that they were there, still somewhere. But their latest and greatest entry into the uh, wider canon was during the Storm of Chaos, when Archeon, 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 I've heard so many ways to pronounce that bastard's name that I'm just going to call him the Ever Chosen, was carrying out his crusade against the Empire, the End Times. Incidentally, this was the end times before the end of times that actually ended up being the end of times. <laughs> it gets complicated. But to make sure that he could carry out his objective of smashing open Middenheim, the Ever Chosen needed a whole host of seed specialists to traverse the near impossibly tall walls of the city. He brought with him some more inventive ones, like mutants with various climbing hooks hammered into their appendages. But he couldn't rely entirely on simply climbing the walls, maybe they needed to be brought down as well. And in order to see if this couldn't be done, the Ever Chosen entered into a pact with the Chaos Dwarves of the Dark Lands to provide him with siege weaponry of unmatched ferocity. And in return, the Chaos Dwarves would have their share of the slaves gathered during the campaign. And the crooked-nosed, snaggle-toothed little Chaos Dwarves are of course always up for a little bit of slaving. And so, they began examining their old arsenal to see if they couldn't come up with something bigger and better than ever before. And it was in this process of innovation that a particularly curious glance landed upon the Earthshaker Cannon. Still one of my favourite old models. God, I love the old Chaos Dwarves. They just look so goddamn cool. But the Earthshaker not to be confused with its uh, 40k variant, by the way, well, it didn't quite live up to the exacting standards of the modern Chaos Dwarf Warsmith. Uh, also, not to be confused with its 40k equivalent. Something a bit mm, bigger was required, for the Earthstraker was, heavy duty in and of itself, firing special made shells that made, as the name indicates, the very Earth shake. If you're gonna take down the walls of Middenheim, though, something more potent than gunpowder was going to be required. And so began the experiments with binding demons inside of guns. You see, this wasn't really a, a thing done by the old style Chaos Dwarves. They did have some innovations, like automated machinery sort of kind of thing, um, like the, the ancient statues of the dwarves, for example. But it wasn't quite as demonic as it is today. These days, the demon smiths of the Chaos Dwarves have a whole bestiary of various critters and creatures infused with demon blood. But the Hell Cannon was back then something quite unique and remarkable, something rather innovative even. An artillery piece that was both artillery and monstrous infantry at the same time, which we'll get back to in a little bit. But in essence, what makes the Hell Cannon so very, very special is that it certainly has elements of the machine inside of it, of course. It is bound by iron bands to keep it under control, which is inscribed with not two sacred runes. And its machine crew as well are more tamers and handlers, really, than mechanical operators. Uh, literally, the reason why the Hell Cannon has those fancy little spike thingies protruding from its wheels is because the Hell Cannon must be nailed to the ground, lest it run amok. 
This, too, is indicative of the less-than-perfect mastery of a demon machinery that the Chaos Dwarves had at the time. For the concept of a demon machine, you see, was not at all entirely unknown even back then. In fact, in some of the very earliest um, examples of the Chaos Codexes, we knew of demon machines. But they were thought to be something that could not possibly exist beyond the absolute furthest reaches of the extreme north of the old old Warhammer world, where the veil between reality and immaterium was gossamer thin, as they were, in essence, demons made flesh, inhabiting tremendous machines. The old demon machines were literally entire rolling castles or titans in the Warhammer fantasy universe. They were sort of the super uber ridiculous over the top end game bosses that certain champions who <laughs> the gods had perhaps overblown expectations of would have to fight as again up in the north all rules went right out the window but it was thought to be impossible to bring this kind of combination of demon and metal further down south this is where the true genius of the Chaos Dwarves became apparent, for they managed to not just bind a demon in shackles of cold iron, but, um, well, the ammunition fired by the Hell Cannon is, uh, is not a good old-fashioned metal shot or anything. It is fed, in a way, but not with grape shot, not with bullets or black powder or anything like that, as mentioned. Old-fashioned gunpowder simply wouldn't quite have the oomph required. No, 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 no. The, the bones and occasionally the living slaves that are fed into its infernal hatch is not for ammo. It's not for firing. It is for tearing a literal hole in the immaterium contained by the cannon, allowing it to fire, in essence, a raw globulate of pure warp energy into the world. This is the secret behind the remarkable destructive force of the Hell Cannon, the impact of its ammunition being described as so potent as to temporarily turn the ground near liquid as it undulates and waves across the terrain, throwing men and horses and artillery pieces from their perches and sending them sprawling on the ground. No regular mortar shell could do this. Not even the old earth shaky cannon was this destructive. And the reason why it can be so devastating, despite its not that ridiculous caliber, is because, again, what lands is not mere metal. It is not mundane stone. It is a force of unreality acting upon the world. And it is more than happy to defy any conventional sense of logic. This awful nature of the weapon also lends it its second greatest strength. For whilst the Hell Cannon will, well, non-existent anything it does hit, even if it does not strike a unit directly, the mere impact of the weapon nearby can send even seasoned veterans running for the hill as, again, as a whiff of hell exploding next to you is liable to make the bravest man pee his pants. And if there's any sense in him, turn and run as well. Because of course a hell cannon doesn't merely just obliterate you, it doesn't just kill you, it sends your soul screaming into the immaterium to be torn to pieces by ferocious warp predators. At least if you could die during normal circumstances, there might be the chance that your soul would not be cognizant enough to experience the tortures as it is hurled into the abyss. And worse still, the weapon doesn't kill you. You're merely bathed in immaterial energies for a few moments. It has tentacles and third legs and all manners of interesting eyeballs begin bursting out of your body in vicious explosions of blood and viscera. The Hell Cannon is a true terror weapon in the most literal sense of the word, but... It does have its drawbacks as well. 
as you might very well imagine, a demon, an entity of chaos, does not take very kindly to being imprisoned in cold iron shackles and driven around the countryside and told to do this, do that, shoot over there, don't shoot over there, eat these things, don't eat those people, behave yourselves, etc. As you need to bear in mind that to a demon, our world, the immaterial world, is like Disney World combined with the world's largest toy shop, with the world's largest candy store, with the world's largest free all you can uh -huh, brothel, combined with the world's largest fandom convention, and everything else you could possibly ever imagine wanting all in the same place and escalated to eleven and a billion. Our world is the best thing a demon can ever imagine, literally. Eating humans, frightening humans, causing terror, causing pain, causing conflict, all of these things is like the purest cocaine to a demon. It makes them stronger, it makes them feel good, it gives them every piece of positive feedback you can possibly imagine. And to then be put in a tiny cage and paraded around in front of all of the goodies and told to not touch them. <laughs> Mm, yes, you can imagine that the the demon gets a mighty bit peevish really quickly. And that is, in essence, what the Hell Cannon is. It is a caged monster, a beast of incredible violence, held in check by a handful of chains and some metal binding. <laughs> it's, it's a ludicrous weapon. That is in part why only the Chaos Dwarves could ever possibly make something like this, because only the Chaos Dwarves could possibly dream up a weapon so utterly suicidal, where if its handlers messes up at any point, oh, the Hell Cannon is no ally of the Chaos Dwarves. Oh no, it is a prisoner of the Chaos Dwarves, and if given the opportunity to suck one of them down its maw, tearing their flesh from from their supple little bones and sucking their marrows out of them even as they dissolve slowly in the soup of the immaterium. Oh, it'll be the sweetest little bonus the Hell Cannon has ever had. In fact, here's the thing. You remember how I talked about the Hell Cannon occasionally not behaving as an artillery piece, but rather as monstrous infantry? Well, it had a special rule, you see, where if an enemy unit was within a certain amount of range from the Hell Cannon, the Hell Cannon would try to shake its bindings off. It would try to dislodge itself and charge that enemy unit. And it would do so pretty damn well do. As if memory serves, it was something like a, a monstrous chariot or something causing impact hits and all manners of horrible nonsense. I mean, look at the enormous thing. Imagine this thing in melee, uh, bearing in mind that it can move itself if it wants to, running people over with its enormous spiked wheels, gobbling them up in its gun barrel-like mouth, vomiting forth warp energy, molten metal and dissolved flesh all over the ranks of an infantry formation while screaming in delight all the time. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it, it used to be the case that when an artillery piece in Warhammer got within spitting distance of enemy infantry or cavalry or raiders or flyers or anything like that, the cavalry's days were numbered. Well, the Hell Cannon fixed that assumption quite nicely indeed. I even have a bit of a personal story with the damn thing. You see, back in the day, one of the things I would always do with my Skaven army was I would deploy the most ridiculous amount of basic troops imaginable because it allowed me to fight every single fight with the maximum advantage possible, where at one point people just wouldn't bother charging my units, to be fair in our small friend circle everybody had figured it out by then, because if they did, I would simply charge them back with three or four units the next turn. 
but I did use a few gutter runners. Gutter runners are great because they can infiltrate on the other end of the board, making them perfect for hunting down squishy little real line characters like wizards, or killing archers, or, you guessed it, artillery pieces. Well, when the Hellcannon was first introduced, I didn't really quite know what to think of it. It was simply a giant artillery piece, and I'm like, okay, well, I've heard all kinds of nonsense about it, and, well, I'm sure it'll die if I stab it. No. No, it didn't. Rest in peace, little gutter runners. You will be forgotten swiftly, I have no doubt. On the bright side, it did take my opponent's hell cannon out of running for like three turns off the match, so, you know, worked out, sort of, at the end, anyways. And that isn't the only things the Hell Cannon could do, either. It had a misfire chart. Now, again, back in the day, most weapons did have some form of a misfire chart. Some were far more forgiving than others. The, uh, the Hellblaster Volley Gun, for example, for the Empire. It was a potentially ludicrously devastating weapon that could literally wipe out entire unit in single turns of shooting. But... It could also explode, violently. Or my own favorite warp lightning cannons. I used to bring two of those, until both of them elected on the same turn to spin in place and fire their shots straight down my entire battle line. But the Hell Cannon, oh, it didn't simply just explode or shoot in some random direction or tear free and start cavorting about the battlefield. Oh no, because again, it's a demon. It's a magical creature. And when it got really pissy, it could make the winds of magic themselves sour, screwing over every wizard on the battlefield. Which, to be fair, uh, casting any sort of magic, with magic of course being inherently the manipulation of chaos energy, next to a bound demon whose job it is to fire the literal shit of the warp at the enemy, risky prospect. Even more so as of course wizards are favoured snacks of demons, as their souls are just ever so bright and yummy, you see. I would uh, make sure to keep a solid bit of distance between myself where I am magic caster and any chaos dwarf machinery, regardless of its origins, frankly. But these minor malfunctions, these itsy-bitsy teething problems, they're mostly somebody else's worry. <laughs> as the Hell Cannon operated mainly with the Hordes of Chaos as a sort of pseudo-allied contingent. I believe... I believe they had their own entry in the Chaos Codex. Don't, don't quote me on that one, as of course there was no Chaos Dwarf Codex, but I don't believe they were considered allies. I believe... Or were they just in the Hordes of Chaos during the, the End Times Army book? I can't remember now, but anyways, the Chaos Dwarves didn't have a codex at the time, and so this happy little little thingy was literally somebody else's problem. And no doubt, the Chaos Dwarves uh, took notes. Ample notes. Every warsmiths and hellforger would dispatch their least favoured apprentices to keep an eye out on the hell cannon, to keep it numbing and firing and being effective, because after all, people did pay good money for these things, so it'd be unfortunate if they did nothing, of course, obviously. But the real bounty of the Chaos Dwarves was the knowledge brought back by its handlers, by its crews. Whether or not they occasionally ate some Chaos Warriors, whether they ran amok, whether the presence of enemy spellcasters might have something to do with it, what circumstances could the Hell Cannon be relied upon to behave itself, and under what circumstances could it absolutely not be relied upon to behave itself? Which wardings worked well? Which wardings barely worked at all? How strong would the chains need to be? How long would they need to be? Would there be preference to keep them tight or loose, etc, etc? All of these millions and a half little things that was brought back to the mighty dark tower of Zaranagrund, where the Hell Cannons were further perfected. 
so that the Chaos Dwarves themselves could employ entire batteries of them, as well as advance their own knowledge about demon-infested weaponry, as these days they possess quite the horde of demon-infused guns, living battering rams, and combat automatons, with more than a touch of fire and chaos within them. Now, I'll be honest here, a lot of them I don't like. Some of them I actually quite do. The Iron Demon, for example. The idea of essentially a, a massive steam-driven train engine to be used to run through entire castle gates or enemy formations. That's pretty goddamn snazzy right there. Or the bigger bombard versions that they've got now. Or the magma cannon. These are pretty cool. Now, I don't think the magma cannon has a demon inside of it. Yet other things like the Kadai and the Kadai destroyer... They're a bit too overtly chaosy for me. And they have the stink of Total War Warhammer a little bit about them. So... Before I uh, wrap up, as I've covered most of the uh, necessary lore elements here, I decided to talk about the Hell Cannon as a bit of a smaller topic, because, well, they are about to be released for Total War Warhammer 3 in um, a little under a week now, and, oh God, part of me really wants to play, but I am going to resist, because uh, Total War Warhammer... I'm not a fan anymore, I'm really not, because I know I would play it and I'd probably have a lot of fun because they even went with the good old style of the Chaos Dwarves 2, the far more old school Assyrian and Abyssinian style. Oh, I, I love it, but I would play it for like three or four hours and then I would be, oh my god, I'm just playing the same goddamn Total War game again. The Total War game I've bought twice for $60 and have gifted to me a third time for another $60 and I am playing a $20 DLC on top of it all. Oh, I, mm, at some point you gotta draw the line. And mine is um, right around here. Even the Dowies are cannot tempt me to cross it yet. Give me a deep discount and maybe I'll consider it. Alternatively, I have been thinking about doing exclusive live streams for my supporters, patrons, uh, a subscribe star for however long we're allowed to keep that link in YouTube's descriptions, and the members of my second channel. Maybe... Maybe that would be worth the sacrifice, and at least then I could just do a one-off stream. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps I have found adequate justification for myself. <laughs> we shall see if sanity prevails. Anyways, the Chaos Hell Cannon. A literal monster of the Immaterium, dragged into our world by sorcerers who really should have known better, and then sent off to the Chaos Warriors to be useful or enormous man-eating liabilities. Whichever one happens, the Chaos Dwarves will be happily writing notes in the background and taking their pay in triplicate. Thank you very much. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.